or drive, be careful for the traffic, you know how that goes. And the population is recorded at around 600K people. It used to be 400K around the 1900s, but we've seen a slight increase because of the care there is there, the peaceful uh, serenities, and just uh, overall living there. There are 28 municipalities, and there's 536 square miles. That's how much Tipaza Wilaya covers throughout Algiers. It's surrounded around Wilaya of Kraf, Wilaya of Ain, Dafla, Wilaya of Blida, Wilaya of Algiers. These are the states that all surround it. There are many mountain hills and foothills around Tipaza. And these mountains include Mount Dahla, Shinoa, Mount Zekir, and there are many bodies of water as well. It's my third geographic slide. And as for the climate and temperatures, it's around 33 degrees Celsius in the summer and a little colder, 5.7 degrees Celsius in cold months. The temperature is a lot like American temperature. There isn't really a difference from the Western countries like the deserts in Algeria. It's cold in the winter, warm in the summer. Throughout 1978 and to 2004, there was an average rainfall of about 600 millimeters. And the winds are pretty strong. Personally, when I went, you know, I felt those winds, the breeze of the summer. And um, that's about it for this background. Now, Tipaza's history. This is what Tipaza is mainly known for. It's greatly known for its significant role in past historic wars and the conquest of Roman empires. It was uh, once a Punic trading post, and it was used as a strategic base for wars because it was built off a hill. So taking this as Tipaza, right, and the beach would be here. So the people would live on the top over here, and any enemies that would go by boats and sea to try to conquer Tipaza, all the uh, soldiers would see them coming because it was down here, the beach was down here, and they had to go up hills to reach the enemies. So whenever enemies would come through, you know, commanders would send their soldiers directly down on them, and it'd be end. So it was a great place for war, and that, that's why Tipaza's monuments are still here to this day. These were part of the wars that happened in the past. Um, they also made ditches in the sand down here. They would put little traps, so when people would come up the hills, they would easily fall into the ditches, and it'd be done for them for the war. Continuing on to positive rich history, it has many distinctive ruins, uh, Roman, Byzantine, Phoenician, and um, it has many it has it consists of three main lands, two are archaeological parks, right? These pictures show some of the monuments from the parks. This is a huge overview from the top of one of the archaeological parks. And since it was built on a hill, you know, it was good for war. The, they, Christians actually tried to conquer the city from us, Muslims, right? They tried to have it as their own back in 480 BC, right? But um, Spain wouldn't let them. They said, anyone who stays in Tipaza is gonna get killed, is gonna get murdered. This isn't your property, right? So Christians still decided to be hard-headed and stay and try to conquer this heritage site, but they were all murdered. And uh, it was left like this. Tipaza was untouched until the 1800s. Nobody touched it, nobody destroyed any of the lands until France would eventually, you know, consider it their own in the Revolutionary War, but us Algerians, it's truly our land. So Algerians would stay to uh, take it over and they would not touch it at all. They would leave the heritage sites just like that. They would leave the monuments just like that, you know, for people to see the historic background. So, uh, like I said before, I've personally been to Tipaza. I decided to include two pictures. This is one with my uncle hit a wave hitting the rocks. This is another one by myself. So, um, there was a 2.2 kilometer wall to protect itself in battle, proved its extensive history. 
shows that Phoenicians, Romans, Vandals, and Arabs were all once here. That's four generations of four different types of people. You know, that shows that this really is a strong heritage site. It really does have strong historic background. And it was first discovered or recorded around 2,000 years ago. That was the latest record of Tipaz's discovery. And it's officially declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Another thing to be proud of. Now, unlike other states, other Algerian states, it didn't have much significance in the Revolutionary War. It was, uh, it was kind of like a state of respect to leave it untouched for uh, when the French fought us because it had such, you know, important significance. You know, the French didn't want to touch it. They didn't want to fight in it because if they won the war, they would have kept it. And the Algerians didn't want to touch it because, of course, when they won the war and when we did, we would have we would have it just like we have it now to show you know the rest of the world how important this site is. Um, and there were there are barely any terror attacks. The last terror attack was in 2003. Only 12 people died, right? But within the past 15 years, it's been very peaceful. It's a great place to live if uh, people you know want to stay safe, you know, stay out of the drama and stay out of the usual Algerian fight. Economic demographic analogous. Its rising population went from 400K to 600K over 30 years, as I stated before. Berber and Arabic are mainly spoken. Uh, from the younger generation, you know, they're enforcing more Arabic than Qabili because, you know, that's just the general norm of the Algerian languages. And, of course, the Algerian Dinan is used, as I have here. It's known for its agriculture and farming. About, I'd say, 30% of the whole land takes up gardening. You know, gardening for cereals, gardening for crops, um, all kinds of gardening. That's why Tipaza is a huge source for food and fekia and uh, anything that's grown on the land. Aleppo pine and oak green are also the most popular trees in the land. These are uh, regular American trees we see every single day, nothing special. Tipaza and what it's known for. So, of course, you know, when people see Tipaza as a World Heritage Site, they want to come here, they want to visit Algeria. All of a sudden, people want to see Algeria just because of Tipaza, right? They don't want to see the real Algerian capital, Algiers. And so, uh, it's become a massive, massively popular site for tourism. We have uh, much knowledge and heritage here. You know, there are very, there are a lot of tourists that come on like tourist quests. They want to learn, like, what is this from? What is this building from? Where is this mountain from? And as far as foods, we have uh, squid and shrimp and fish are very popular because of the sea. You know, uh, a lot of people sell it, but. There are many of the general Algerian norms, such as couscous and burak and all the food that we eat us from Algeria. It's the same thing over in Tipaza, nothing really different. And inspired dishes come, might come from France, right, just because of its past historic significance. As far as Tipaza's clothing, again, just like food, it's more similar to Algerians, Algerians' general normal style. Men prefer button-ups, khakis, wide, not slim like the Americans, of course. And we prefer, the men prefer uh, leather, Italian leather jackets. That's also a very popular norm. And just like our men are dressed here today, you know, this is what we prefer at Tipaza, right? And for the women, of course, dresses. You know, they love dresses, Every uh, many different types of dresses, many parlors, many shops. Uh, personally making the dresses in Tipaza. So it's more like all the Algerian states, nothing too specific, not like no specific category for clothing. Now, I know Tipaza doesn't have huge famous scholars like Algerian states, you know, it doesn't have uh, famous war uh, people that really changed Algeria. That's more towards the other Algerian states, but we still have athletic talent in Tipaza. Uh, there's actually one of the athletic people that were known from Tipaza was a famous soccer player by the name of Bidad Atafan, right? He plays for Mouloudia, and he was born on July 3rd, 1985. So at least we have someone, you know, that can make a push for Tipaza, you know, make Tipaza a little more significant. And we have another 
Oh, uh, well, Jerry and Long Jumper, actually, not all soccer players, like everyone thinks. This uh, Jerry and Long Jumper is named Scott Dutton, who is a famous Long Jumper that participated in the Summer Olympics in 1992 for, in Barcelona. And he was born on June 1st, 1969. These are just my cited sources. So, um, throughout this presentation, all, I hope everyone learned a thing or two. Tipaza might not be as significant in war and in scholars as other Algerian states, but that is the reason I wanted to choose it. I wanted to kind of inform you guys, oh yeah, maybe Tipaza is just a heritage site, but it truly does have significant background from past years, from all the way from 400 BC, where uh, there are a lot of like Roman activity, then Phoenician, and us Arabic people, we took it over and we have like this thing, we have this state to show off and say, oh look, we have something in Algeria that anyone can go to and you can see oh, all these beautiful heritage sites. You can learn something from them, you know? You're not just gonna go to a tourist site in just some random state in Algeria and just say you had a good time. You could say, oh, I actually saw something that I've never seen before. And that is it for my presentation. I hope you learned something. Thank you for your time. Thank you.